you join me here at Old Berry Hill Fisheries in Dorking, where today I'm going to be fishing for bream. And what I want to do is run you through the feeder setup that I like to use on venues like this. It's a little bit different, it's sort of a commercial, they do fish for carp here, but the carp just don't get in the way, and you can catch some fantastic bags of skimmers and bream. I'm sat on peg 75, I've got an island at about 65 metres, I'm going to be casting towards. So first things first, nice strong, durable tackle. The rod I've picked for today's session is the new Enzon Super Slim. I call it Super Slim, the blanks are around 8% slimmer than the previous rods. The, guide, the guides are much, much thinner and it's a real nice rod to use. Not only use, but I can achieve distance very, very easily. And that's one of the things that's very important. Never choose a rod that you're going to struggle. Almost choose a rod that you can overachieve the distance. And that way, especially this time of year, when the weather can change, the wind can get up, you're not going to be not making your little area that you've put bait in. There's nothing worse that you can't achieve that distance. So always use a rod that's more than powerful enough. And like I say, the 12 foot version is the one I'm using today. Coupled with an Enzon 5000 reel, Again, nice and it's big enough for me to achieve the distance, but small enough for me to use very quickly. Hopefully we're going to get a few bites here today. As far as lines concerned, a lot of the time with my feeder fishing, I do use braid. Here, because it's shallow, the bites can be quite ferocious. I am using 020 Enzon, um, which is the sinking feeder braid. Very, very strong, very durable line, and it sinks really quick. And again, this time of year, adverse weather conditions, strong side winds. We've got quite a strong side wind here and I want to get that feeder in position and get that line sunk. And then I want to just be nice and comfortable and wait for those bites. Probably going to be leaving it out there 15, maybe 20 minutes to begin with. If I get a fast response, then I'll be obviously changing that regularity a little bit. Coming down to the business end of the rig, very, very simple. I like to keep all my feeder rigs nice and simple. I've just got an ends on swivel there, quick link swivel, sliding up and down. Um, a lot of the fisheries that I fish, the feeders have to be free running. Just an ends on float stop again, up to the knot, four inch twizzled boom. Again, this just holds it away from the feeder, makes it virtually tangle free. And the beauty with this rig is, on a lot of these venues where there's a big head of fish, the fish can come straight to the feeder and you're going to end up want, wanting to fish a 10 or a 12 inch hook length. And that twizzle boom will just keep that short hook length away from the feeder and stop any tangles. Those casts when you're reeling in quite quick, especially if you get on a few fish and the adrenaline's pumping, you want to wind in quick and get back out there. There's nothing worse than fishing with a rig that just tangles and spins constantly. So keep it nice and strong and durable and keep it simple. There's nothing else you need. If I'm casting a long way, one little trick, I'll just put a number eight stop there and put that down just to give me added security that that won't go over the knot. But apart from that, I don't change anything. I've started today on a 40 centimetre hook length. You can see it's 015. I've got a size 14 hook on. I'm fishing nice and durable. The water's very, very coloured here. And I know Berry Hill quite well and you don't really get rewarded with fishing lighter. However, a lot of the venues in, in particular, Bow Beach, for instance, in the summer when it's warm, you can fish ever so heavy, 018, 020. Just fished a two-day match there a little while ago, and you had to fish 014, 012. And having a variety of hook lengths at your disposal is of utmost importance. One little trick that I do with them, always tie them long, then you can obviously cut them down to the desired length. If you tie them at four or five foot, you can cut them down to a foot. If you tie them at a foot, you can't have them any longer. So when you do sit down and tie these hooks up, make sure you tie them to a nice long length of line and then just cut them down to the desired length come the day. You'll notice as well today I've got a hair rig. When you can, obviously on some international feeder type matches, hair rigging's not allowed. Most normal conventional matches in England, you can fish with hair rigs. And today I'm gonna to be fishing hair rigged worm. It's something that a lot of people don't do, but trust me, it is the best way to present worms at distance. Not only do they not come off, but they don't mask the point of the hook. And when bites are hard to come by on those cold winter days, you wanna make every single one count. And the fact that I can cast out knowing one that my hook bait is definitely on 
and two, my hook point is not masked, for me, is an absolute massive plus. So you've seen the rig, it's nice and simple. Just incorporate that this time of year with a little bit of patience and try and get your accuracy up to speed. One thing I wanna talk about before we finish looking at the gear and move on to the bait is feeder choice. You can see here, I've just got an ends on 20 gram on. Obviously for today, that could be okay for the short line, but for the longer line, I'm really gonna be looking at using one of the cage type rocket feeders that we do. Um, we've got another one there, 30 grams with the weight at the bottom. And what I want to achieve with my feeder is to be able to hit the spot no matter what. If the wind gets up in my face, left to right, wherever, I want to hit that spot. And more importantly, if I can be very accurate, it, it enables me to be not very accurate. And by that, I mean I can go left, right, or just past. If I've cast all over the place from the word go, it's very hard to try somewhere new. And here at Berry Hill, I've caught a lot of fish, especially last winter, by just plundering one area and then literally going half a metre past on one of these feeders. Again, you can be very accurate and you can quite often end up with a decent run of fish. One feeder, again, that a lot of people use, and, and I love using these, are the window feeders. Again, you can put a little bit of bait in, whatever your desired bait is. For me, I like to put in a little bit of chop worm, a few maggots and a couple of bits of corn and just cap it with some nice wet ground bait. And like I say, not only are these are very, very obviously easy to cast straight and at long distances, but you can put tiny, tiny amounts of bait in. That's about it really as far as my setup. As you've seen, it's very simple, but strength and durability is of a must. Today we're going to be casting around 58, 59 metres just to where the island just flattens out. It's quite chilly and there's a strong wind blowing. And like I say, it's not as warm as it has been. I'm just going to target the bottom end of that, the bottom side of that slope on the island and I want to be fishing very accurately. All my gear is nice and strong. I've got a nice array of hook lengths with me that I can just swap and change. Hair rig corn, hair rig worms, maggots even like a bunch of pinkies and that can sometimes get you a few bites here. I'm gonna go down the worm route and like I say, that hair rig worm, I've got so much confidence, even when I'm not getting bites, that it's actually fishing dead right every time when my bait's on. And half the battle when you're looking for a handful of bites on these cold winter's day is just being confident in your setup.